So let's get into it. We're going to have a great discussion about false prophets today. And with the 2024 elections right around the corner, it'll be here before you know it. I feel like no topic is more important than talking about this right now. Did we learn our lessons from the last election season with dozens of false prophets predicting a second Trump term? And that didn't happen. And I'm going to suggest I don't think the church learned their lesson. That's why I'm doing this video here today, because there's lessons to learn. And there's another election coming up, and we don't want to happen what happened the last time. I remember discussing this with my pastor because I was just so disappointed with the outcome of the election. And he said to me, point blank, Josh, you have to ask for forgiveness. I said, for what? He said, for being deceived by these prophets in the first place. Put the responsibility on yourself first. Hard words to accept, but he was 100% right. Before we get in further into the video today, please help me get to 25k subscribers. Please consider subscribing. I promise to get you the best Christian content moving forward. No cookie cutter stuff. Hit the bell to get notified. Only 10% of people have this on and 90% of people watching my videos have not subscribed. Please do that. So 2020 was the most unhealthy I had ever been in my life. And that's why I'm doing this video. The world was coming apart due to COVID and racial riots. And we had the worst election in US history. Now I must admit, I was deceived. The church I was going to gave prophetic words that Trump would get a second term and that he would win in a landslide. And then he lost. And then they went along the lines that the election was stolen and that we need to do spiritual warfare to have Trump reinstalled to office. At the time, I remember thinking I went along with it for a little while. And then I said, my goodness, this is this is no good. I can't go along with this anymore. Biden has been inaugurated into office. And then they said, well, it was that the election was stolen. We were right, Trump did win, but the election was stolen. And my answer to that was, well then why didn't you prophesy that the election would be stolen since God is all knowing and you claim to speak for him? But they didn't have an answer to those ones. I realized something took place during that election, but there was never any proof ever presented of a stolen election. After a long time sitting with the Lord, I realized several things took place during that election. The mail ballots were definitely stuffed, no question. Billionaires like Mike Bloomberg and George Soros were able to swing key states through donations to the left. Facebook spent 400 million to sway the election and many other influential companies did so. It was possible there was foreign interference from other countries like China and Russia, but that hasn't been proved. So the election was highly influenced through these factors, but there was no evidence ever presented that the election machines themselves had been hacked and Biden did win by a few million votes. But I know that there was definitely spiritual warfare in all of this. So real quick, help me get to reach 1 billion people through social media, which is the mandate I feel God has given me this. To keep this, this channel ads free, and if this content has blessed you, please consider giving a one-time gift via PayPal or a monthly don donation of $5 a month via Patreon. The video links are in the description below as well as tons of good information about me and social media. I need a thousand people to part with me to go full time into video creation and pray and see if God would have you support me. Now, let's say this, you can give a bad prophecy every now and then and not be labeled a false prophet, okay? So just because you're wrong does not make you a false prophet. You could be a soulless prophet prophesying what you want. You could be a misguided prophet. In some cases, you could not be a very good prophet. And in some cases, just a stupid prophet. And in rare cases, you could be mentally ill. Like some of the people that I put on the video photo for this video. But the problem is with the people in that picture, they never owned it. They never repented. They never owned their mistake. They never owned that Trump did not get two terms and they prophesied two successive terms. They just kept the lies going. And since the church is weak, we did nothing to these people and the lies continue to this day. If I ever see these people in public, I will remove them from ministry. Yes, you heard me right. I believe my words carry that authority. I'm not prideful. I have missed some prophetic words in my life, but these people continue to spew lies and they need to be called out and removed from ministry. Please hit the thumbs up if you like this. So this will tell YouTube to get the video out to more people, something that you can do real quick to be a big help. So let's go over this first. First and foremost, 
Steve Schultz from the Elijah List. This guy is totally off the wall and I can say that confidently. Anybody that's even associated with this guy can be considered sus. At one point, I did follow him when Kim Clement was still alive and there were some good prophecies coming out of the Elijah list. But then, during the election season, he had every kook he could find that was given Trump prophecies. And after Trump didn't win, they continued this, a parade of it for another month, that Trump was still president in the heavens and he was going to be, there was going to be a big exposure and Trump was gonna be restored to office and all this other nonsense. Steve Schultz lost all credibility in my eyes and really shouldn't even be doing a show anymore. Guys, if you're listening to that stuff, man, there's a sucker born every minute. Hank Kuhneman, another one, doubled and tripled down that Trump would be restored to office, never repented, just spun it. The guy's church is growing like crazy. His influence is growing like crazy. He's on Daystar television all the time. The guy, to me, seems to fit the category of somebody that's mentally ill. But who knows? Kat Kerr, another one. She's totally crazy. She's talking about uh, she rides uh, volcanoes, lava in heaven, and there's jello mountains, and um, the cows drive the tractors in heaven, and all the farmers. It's just total craziness. She has almost a half a million followers on Facebook, and she's saying that Trump was still really the president in heavenly places and that he would be restored to office and she saw a parade going where thousands of people were lining up in the streets as Trump was restored to office. Another one, Chris Yoon, has over 200,000 followers and is still peddling the Trump nonsense to this day, if you go on his channel. This guy, I think, also fits the bill of possibly being mentally ill like Kat Kerr and Hank Kuhneman. Julie Green, another person in this thing. People reach out to my channel all the time that's saying this woman is totally crazy, okay? She has over 115,000 followers on YouTube and two years later, we're going on with the lies. She's still going on with lies. She said about a month ago that she gave a prophetic word that Trump would not be indicted, that God would stand and strike down every, every person that stands against him and that all of it would fall to the ground. But now we see that trump has been indicted four separate times since then so i think it's, it's fair to say that um she's not a very good prophet at a minimum then you have jeff jansen who doubled down on trump's second term shortly after he left his wife for his his mistress and now unfortunately he is no longer with us he's dead and you have to say it's possibly for the judgment from god now the ones who did repent Let's give these people a lot of credit. Let's give them a round of applause. These people did the right thing. They humbled themselves. They were accountable to the body of Christ. And these people include Sid Roth, Sean Boltz, Chris Valentin from Bethel and Redding, Jeremiah Johnson, and Marcus Rogers. Okay? These people did admit, hey, we were wrong. We said Trump would get a second term. We were wrong. We repent. They apologized and humbled themselves and went to the body of Christ. Now, you know, you can say, can you still trust these people moving forward? Uh, I would say, um, be very cautious. You know, Sid Roth, I don't think I can really trust really anything that comes out of his mouth or that's on his show or even the guest he has. I'm just really um, just keeping that type of stuff at a distance because I lost confidence in these people and rightfully so. It's one thing to prophesy something small, but when you're prophesying national events and you drop the ball, that's a big deal. Why am I saying all this? Because, well, first off, the elections are coming up and I don't want you guys to be hurt. I don't want you guys to be let down and deceived the way that I was. We need to be wise and discerning. Like the book of Proverbs talks a lot about the difference between a fool and a wise and discerning people. We want to be wise and discerning people that sit with things and wait on the Lord. I remember studying Elijah this year. And in the time of Elijah, there were 1,200 false prophets. And only two real prophets existed at the time, Elijah and Micaiah. Now, there were 7,000 that didn't bow their knee to Baal, but it doesn't say those people were prophets. So really, you have 1,200 false prophets and two real ones. I remember Derek Prince saying, as he examined this passage, he said, sadly to say, the odds are not much different today. 
and that was in 19 in the 80s right so now we're in in many ways an apostate state of the church and i would say the odds are even lower i do believe in prophecy and paul instructs us and, and instructs people to prophesy and instructs people not to despise prophecy and i know many who are very accurate some who are like samuel and none of their words fell to the ground but in today's times true prophets are very rare you can find them but it's not easy a lot of them are these local pastors from these churches that you never heard of that have been faithful to god for 20 30 years and they're really accurate and they really hear from god like for instance kim clement and john paul jackson were true prophets they predicted in 2007 that trump would be in the white house years before it happened and at this point and at that point it was laughable that trump could ever become president kim kim clement predicted two consecutive supreme court justices that would be appointed back to back and i remember just crying when that happened because it was a fulfillment of prophecy but most of the people you see in the mainstream and on youtube a lot of these people are fakes or just misguided here is one piece of advice i got from ywam's co-founder he's in 95 percent of countries worldwide if you need a word from god then seek him directly often other people aren't very careful in giving prophetic words and some of these people are really good people but they just either don't have the experience or they're a little misguided for prophets i have you know that for a few years i have to know them for a few years and know them for a while get to see their life and their ministry and to see if their words come to pass i don't take this lightly anymore i just don't just follow anyone i have to know these people and see over many years whether or not i can follow this person and they are a tr and they are a true prophet but the best prophetic words are from the bible directly come on especially on the end times it's 170 chapters that cover the end times and we can look to that to see biblical prophecy unfold before our eyes so the best prophetic words are from the bible so comment down below let me know your thoughts on on prophecy on the election on everything upcoming and the state of the church right now i promise i'll try to answer back i love your comments um people comment from all over the world today i got a fan from south africa um just just truly amazing comment down below let's get into it real quick so i was reading my word this this uh this week and basically i'm going through the book of jeremiah and i'm going through it kind of slowly and i'm reading it and i get to jeremiah 23 one of my favorite numbers and i stopped and i said to myself wow it was like the lord was speaking to my heart and he was saying this is a word from my church today jeremiah 23 this is a word from my church today this is my word for the election season this is my word for everything going on so let's look at this jeremiah 23 verse 16 thus saith the lord of hosts do not listen to the words of prophets who prophesy to you filling you with vain hopes they speak visions of their own minds not from the mouth of the lord they say continually to those who despise the word of the lord it shall be well with you and to everyone who stubbornly follows his own heart they say no disaster shall come upon you you ever see that today in the church that we live in everybody's given a good prophetic word that you're going to get wealthy and that basically that God's going to give you several businesses and there's going to be a prophetic wealth transfer like Sean Boltz was saying this year but that nobody is saying that that God is going to remove some things he's going to prune some things he's going to judge and test some things man the prophets these days are all giving positive words but no words of correction and really we see here in the old testament god he's saying that, that the prophets were saying no disaster is going to come to you everything's going to be fine 
it shall be well with you and everybody. Verse 18, for who among them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see and hear his words, who has paid attention to his words and listened? Okay, so in today's culture, because the, the system of the beast is already at work within the world, we got 24 seven information and business cycle that's unfolding before our eyes. It's almost makes it impossible to have a devotional life with God. So the truth is, is a lot of these people, even in big ministries, they have not stood in the counsel of the Lord. They have not spent time with him. They have not been in their Bibles. They have not been seeking God in the secret place. And so this was the word of Jeremiah who stood in the counsel of the Lord to, to see and hear his word, who has paid attention to his words and listened. A lot of these prophets, they don't have a personal relationship with God. And if they don't know what God is speaking to them individually, how are they supposed to give prophetic words to the body of Christ? Jeremiah verse 21. I did not send the prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have proclaimed my words to my people and they would have turned from their evil ways and from their evil deeds. So here we're talking about repentance. God is looking for repentance, okay? A change of heart, a change of mind. Verse 23, I am a God at hand, declares the Lord, a God who is not far away. Praise God for that. Can a man hide himself in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fulfill heaven and earth, declares the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my names, saying, I have dreamed a dream. How long shall there be lies in this heart of the prophets who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? and who think to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, even as their fathers forget the name of Baal. Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let him who, ha who has my word speak my words faithfully. What has a straw in common with wheat, declares the Lord? Is not my word like a fire, declares the Lord? Is it not like a hammer that breaks rocks? And so what I'm thinking about is like Kat Kerr is saying that she has, she's going to heaven and she's going to heaven and she's traveling to heaven on a daily basis and she's riding roller coasters in heaven and, and all this crazy nonsense and talking about all these dreams and visions she has. And it, it, it's all lies. Like Jeremiah is saying, I have dreamed a dream. And like, and God is saying, this is all lies. This is all lies. Verse 29, this is great. Is my, not my word like a fire, declares the Lord, like a hammer that, that breaks the rock into pieces. Verse 30, behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who steal my words from one another. And you got to admit, during, during COVID, during all those Trump prophecies, these people were just copying what everybody else was saying. It was almost like a parrot. They heard that Trump was going to get a second term, so they got on their YouTube channel or their pulpit and started saying, Trump's going to win, Trump's going to win. And they were all just stealing words from one another. But in this case, the words weren't true. Behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who use their tongue to declare, declares the Lord. Behold, I'm against those who prophesy lying dreams, declares the Lord, who tell them and lead my people astray by their lies and their recklessness when I did not send them or charge them. So they do not profit these people at all, declares the Lord. God's talking about a multitude of false prophets and God's saying, I didn't tell these people to speak. I didn't send them. I didn't give them authority at all. They're false prophets. Verse 33. 
when one of his people or a prophet or a priest asks you, what is the burden of the Lord? You shall say to them, you are the burden and I will cast you off, declares the Lord. And as for the prophet, priest, or one of the people who says the burden of the Lord, I will punish that man and his household. Thus you shall say, everyone to his neighbor and everyone to his brother, what has the Lord answered? What has the Lord spoken? But the burden of the Lord you shall not mention any long. For the burden is every man's own word, and you pervert the words of the living God and the Lord of hosts. So for those people who prophesied all that election nonsense, you perverted God's word. And I'm telling you, you're going to come into real judgment. Because when you speak for God, you have to take that very seriously. If you want to give prophetic words to other people, you have to take that seriously. You have to fast. You have to seek God. And God is saying here, they pervert my words of the living God. Verse 37, I'm almost done here. You shall say to the prophet, what has the Lord answered you? Or what has the Lord spoken? But if you say the burden of the Lord, the burden of the Lord, you shall not say the burden of the Lord. Therefore, behold, I will surely lift you up and cast you away from my presence, you and the city I gave to you and your fathers. And I will bring upon you an everlasting reproach and perpetual shame that will not be forgotten. Very strong words. So guys, I feel like this is the word of the Lord for this season. So many YouTube prophets. Everybody's a prophet these days. Everybody has some word, especially in the election season. I just knew immediately in my spirit, the whole prophetic movement needed to be reset. The whole thing needed to be shut down. Instead, except for people that, that have 30, 40 years in the ministry, the whole thing need to be shut down. Jeremiah Johnson did that. He shut his ministry down. They went back to just prayer and reading the Bible and seeking God and learning how to hear from him again. And a lot of these people just went on. Trump did not get elected in the second term and they just kept going forward with the lies, doubling and tripling down, saying, no, 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 Trump will be restored to office. And this word from Jeremiah 29, 23, excuse me, is basically a word for today. There are so many lying and deceiving prophets. God did not send these people. They don't speak for him. They weren't commissioned by him. And they're speaking and they're liars. They're counterfeits. They're fakes. They're winksters. So guys, just as the election season comes forward, seek God yourself for your own word. Seek God about who you should vote for. Stop listening to men because there's so many false prophets. Like in the days of Elijah, 12 hundred prophets but there were only two real prophets elijah and micaiah so in today's day it's the same thing everybody thinks they have a word from the lord but there's very few prophets be wise and discerning thanks for listening today if you want to look below in the description of the video you can follow me on social media and uh, facebook instagram twitter i'd appreciate that so i can just stay in touch with you on different platforms if you want to sign up for the email list um comment down in the video please i'll try my best to get back to, and answer you um and be blessed remember christianity is three things to love god with your whole heart mind and your soul to take that love and love other people with the love he has given you and thirdly to spread the great commission to go out into the world and make disciples of all nations be blessed.